Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bob's Bookshelf. I'm your host, Bob. Uh, in today's episode, a beautiful little book, uh, technically for children, but I think uh, there's a lot more going on than just a children's book. It's called Seeing Things, A Kid's Guide to Looking at Photographs by Joel Meyerowitz. And it was designed by Sonia Diakova of Atelier Diakova. Uh, published by Aperture. Uh, Joel Meyerowitz is a terrific, terrific photographer. And he began shooting in color in the early 1960s, back when, if you were a serious photographer, you weren't supposed to shoot in color. But nonetheless, he did. And his point of view has prevailed. Um, and he's produced quite a few beautiful, beautiful books of his own work over the years. Uh, three of my personal favorites are Provincetown, a series of portraits in that uh, town in Massachusetts. Aftermath, his photographs of Ground Zero in New York City after the 9-11 attacks, and Bay Sky, um, an exquisite series looking from the land out into the ocean and just seeing how the sky and the water interact. So um, fantastic photographer and now author of this book called Seeing Things. So let's, let's pin the image and get started. Okay, here we go. So uh, right on the cover, it says a kid's guide to looking at photographs. I find often that things made for kids end up being clearer and easier to follow and in a way more sophisticated than things that are supposed to be for adults. So I bought this book because I thought the way Marowitz wrote about photography was so interesting that uh, even though I'm no longer a kid, I found lots to learn in this book. But uh, for us as uh, book designers, there's also a number of amazing things uh, in here as well. So we begin with the cover and we see that the, there is an eye on the cover and the eye is constructed of a series of die cuts in the, in the cover itself, in the end paper and in the half title for arriving at the full title here. And then this is mirrored on the back. So it happens exactly the same way back here. Really fun, charming as heck. Um, what a great way to begin a book. So right away, it's telling us this book is about seeing. Beautiful, simple title page, setting up the simplicity and clarity of how the book itself is designed. Table of contents, just a lovely list of titles and really interesting and evocative titles. Okay, we get to hear the introduction by Marowitz and we are instantly presented with a dynamic typographic situation here. And what this does as you start reading is you realize that what the typography is doing is in a sense elucidating the voice of the author. So it's not just straight text where we read and imagine what the voice of the author is like. Here, the typography is sort of enunciating that for us visually. Um, and as part of this introduction, Marowitz has this beautiful passage right here that I'll read to you. These photographs of people and animals, of landscapes and life on the street are full of humor, mystery and surprise and show that any moment of any ordinary day has the potential to activate your mind with a sudden flash of insight. That moment of seeing is like waking up. So beautiful and so true about so many things, especially, uh, but, well, besides photography, also uh, in design as well. So noticing things, noticing small things, noticing the things other people might not notice. Okay, so right away, 
the designer is showing us the structure of this and giving us an idea of how the typography is going to work all the way through. So there's a number of uh, axes that the type can move over to, and then the sizes are just these two sizes all the way through. And it's really amazing and great fun to see how the designer manipulates that all the way through. Okay, so let's go to the first entry. Uh, this is about Henri Cartier-Bresson's uh, famous photo um, from 1932, where he caught this man mid-stride reflected in this water. So um, this one is called Timing is Everything, which in this photograph is obviously true. And so what, what he does is he takes us through and pops out the key items right here. And what I also like is that uh, it happens sometimes even mid-sentence. So not every part of every paragraph or sentence is called forward in this system, okay? So there's, um, there's a margin around the edges. The photographs get closer to the edge than the type does. Okay, and it comes out of this corner and comes down to however close it gets here. All right. So you can also see there's not a consistent hang line. The text comes up from the bottom, as far as I can tell. And then depending on how much text there is, it's either narrower columns or wider columns or what have you, okay. Then what a great surprise, the book rotates 90 degrees, okay? So we have to be, you know, physically interacting with the book, all right? And so now the text uh, rises up out of the gutter, um, the title, connects in the same way as the titles on these pages in terms of this space is mimicked here, okay? But now once the photographs are these large horizontals, they turn sideways, okay? And the other nice thing is that it's not repeated. So the text is here, the photo is here, now the photo is here and the text is there. So there are enough things, <coughs> excuse me, that are consistent to unify everything but there's also a lot of lovely variability, okay? Uh, one especially nice detail in the text that gets larger, notice how the punctuation is hung outside of the, of the axis here, aligning all of this text. So this falls outside of that, okay? That's a really lovely little touch. Also the, the folios are grouped together and they are stacked. I'll come in close so you can see that. Hopefully it'll focus. So right here, 14, 15, really nice little details. So many beautiful details in this book, which makes it clear in a book about noticing things, having other things to notice besides just what the author is telling you to notice is how the design is emphasizing what the author is saying. But the design is emphasizing that through the language of design. The author is emphasizing it through the language of photography and through words, okay? So we have this nice little stretch in through here where everything is horizontal and the book is rotated. And then eventually we come back to this orientation, all right? So depending on how much Meyerowitz writes about an image, in a sense, determines how large the text gets. So in some cases where there's a lot to say, the there is not so much text that's, that is at the big size. And then other times it gets larger like it does here, okay? Um, I think this is a really nice way of uh, solving the problem of what happens when you have a square image and you're left with all of the space at the bottom. Um, should you activate that space or not? In this case, they are. Um, and they're doing it with, you know, Myrowitz's key statement right here. When she saw both man and beast were giving her the dead eye stare as if they both had enough, she immediately knew that the right moment was now. 
So it's a nice way of connecting what, what he's seeing and what he's saying back also to the title. All right, we turn horizontally again and we stay there for a while. And then we end up vertical as well. Um, so just a really terrific, beautiful book. Um, I've read this a number of times and it's really helped me notice things about photographers whose work I like. And then when I see their work in other contexts where the photos are not necessarily the photos that are discussed here, I have a kind of heightened sense of how to look at those photographs. <clears throat> the other interesting thing about this book is how uh, the photographs themselves are sequenced. So obviously, Meyerowitz has an agenda here in terms of the order of the lessons he wants to impart to you as you're learning how to look at photographs. But the photographs themselves are also sequenced, right? So we get this crowd of people in a phone booth, and then we turn the page and we get uh, this crowd of children here. So in a similarly compressed space, okay? So the, the book is going in and out of all of these kinds of little subtle narratives that are built into the photographs themselves, as well as the lessons that Meyerowitz is imparting to us, okay? So sometimes the alignments are very simple. Sometimes they're more complicated. Beautiful um, Richard Mizrak photograph here. So landscape, 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 landscape. And then this is, I think, the only place where this kind of thing happens, where there's a sequence, yeah. So this has uh, an interesting place in the book as well, where uh, we're reading these pictures almost as a series of frames that are grouped together in a narrative, or as Meyerowitz says, uh, uses the form like a comic book. This is a, photo a, a photographic series by Dwayne Michaels, where this figure disappears into a, into a flash of energy and turns into a galaxy. Okay, so the book is about learning how to look closely and how to question what it is you are seeing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that's a good lesson. It's a good lesson for looking at photography. It's a good lesson for looking at design. And it's a good lesson for looking at your own work and analyzing it as you're working on it. So um, anyway, here we are at the end with an afterword by Meyerowitz. Um, copyright page, and then the ending sequence where now the eye is assembled instead of taken apart as it is at the beginning, okay? All right, so let's come back here. All righty, so um, Seeing Things, A Kid's Guide to Looking at Photographs, Joel Meyerowitz, uh, Atelier Diakova, fantastic little book. Um, I get something out of it every time I look at it, either in terms of little design details or in terms of lessons on looking. So um, highly recommended. All right, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.